Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. This is a really exciting time. This might be the first time ever that a member of the staff has actually done a fisherman's service, at least in the experience of many of us. So thanks to- That's what love looks like, people so, yeah. getting up and so, getting here. Thanks to, like. to Kate for that. Uh, and I can go, got it, and there we are. Um, so thanks very much. Um, we uh, and thanks to Jean for uh, Penvin for the the food this morning, uh, and it's our distinct pleasure to introduce Kate and Emily. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. Do you want to sit some more? Oh, no, we have to. So I I thought we'd have a chalice, but we don't. So I want you all to imagine a chalice, and we're going to uh, do the chalice lighting that we do downstairs. If you push over. Uh, with the kids and the youth. Ready? Mm -hmm. So we light this chalice for the light of truth. Right. Sorry, guys, on Zoom. Waving in the background. Okay. We light, light this chalice, chalice for the light of truth, the warmth of love, the energy of action as we gather together in the circle of community. So, welcome, everybody. Um, you can sit if you want, or you can stand. Okay, it's up to you. You have your own ideas. <laughs> anyway, um, so Emily grabbed me a few months ago and said, "Hey, I'm going to do a fisherman's thing. Can you uh, can you come do it with me?" I'm like, "Yeah, whatever. Okay." So I called her and said, "What well, what are we doing anyway?" So I think we're here to talk about um, multi generational community, and um, I'm going to talk about a unique experience I had with. Miss Emily and her fantastic family this summer. So for the past 17 years, I have been going up to Ferry Beach UU Camp and Conference Center, which is on the beautiful coast, right at Saco, Maine, fantastic. And I started going when my kids were super little and I was a new DRE and I needed to figure out like how to do this DRE thing and um, took a lot of classes. Anyway, 17 years later, I'm still going. And part of the reason I still go is because it's the most unique multi-generational community ever. Um, there are big folks and little folks. It's like everybody's taking care of everybody. Everybody's in the mix. Everybody participates in all the things. Kids and youth do everything. Just 21 young adults this summer were at Ferry Beach, which is like mind boggling. Um, and I think there were 18 senior youth which is amazing. Anyway, so I, um, I pitched it to Emily saying, you know, you could come up, it's you'll learn stuff, it's you'll experience, it's like a classroom happening all around you about what it really means to be a multi-generational community. And um, for me, that means that everybody is in the mix, everybody participates, everybody's welcome. And it's not just about saying everybody's welcome, it's about setting up the space so that everybody feels comfortable being themselves, bringing their whole selves and so on and so forth. Um, so, uh, so I invited Emily to come up and, you know, with the family and, you know, she was there as, as uh, the chair of the RE committee. And now she's also a member of the board. So stepping up, digging in, and uh, so it's time to, time to go and, and see what a, a bigger UU experience is like. And so I think it worked out pretty well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Emily came up with her family. Um, it was amazing. And uh, one of the rituals that, I mean, that is fantastic is every single morning, uh, crazy people who are there <laughs> get up and, uh, go in the water at sunrise they do the sun what do they call themselves polar bear. oh yeah the polar bears so the polar bears all line up on the beach and they all jump in and uh emily's husband pj and and her youngest daughter may may got up every morning and did that and then came down to choir so we have a pickup choir every morning it's an outdoor sanctuary beautiful big trees i should have brought pictures but maybe i'll post them on facebook and you can check them out and um we have a musician of you know who's been there for 20 something years and it's like a pickup choir and every morning pj and i and may may sang our hearts out it was so great and i'm going to play one of the songs that we sang and we learned and hopefully we'll share it 
this morning and then also in a service or two uh, as the as the church here gets going. So what would you like to say? Or, or I was actually gonna ask a question. So I just wanna say that I think these days more than ever, what people are looking for is in fact a multi-generational community. And I think that it doesn't just happen because people show up, it's because people are intentionally welcomed in to participate in lots of different ways during a service, a formal service on Sundays, other activities. You know, we've got our fun Fridays that we've been, we've been managing to keep going where everybody's invited to participate and share in, um, in, in some connection and some community fun and participation. And um, so I'm hoping that all of you will kind of join with us in our mission to, to continue to create multi-gen community here in this, in, this, in this community, right? So that kids are more in the mix. They, they feel like this is their place too. They're not stuck in the basement. Nobody knows who they are and they don't know any of the adults and the adults don't really know them. So we've been working really hard, even though we got have been interrupted with COVID to have the kids integrated in the life of the church in, in lots of different ways. And um, so we're hoping that you will, um, you know, just continue to help us make that, make that dream come true because it is, I think what younger families really hope to find when they, when they check us out. Um, and I will say one, one other thing. So one of the major Unitarian Universalist um, training institutions for ministers, Needville Lombard, uh, which is in Chicago, for many years, they did their, for, this is for ministers who are being trained. They have, they have a class in like multi-generational community and worship and preaching and all that kind of stuff. It was held actually at RE Week at Ferry Beach for years and years because um, the, uh, the folks at, at, at Meadville recognized that this was such an incredible example of how a multi-generational community really functions. And um, it's pretty magical, actually. I mean, you know, I did, when I worked at a different congregation, I was talking about this to one of my friends there, a, a mother, but she had two little boys. And I said, well, you could come up. You know, it's, it's really special, you know, I'm doing my pitch. I mean, you know, people are free to do what they want, but I'm like, it's, you know, it's like my spiritual home. Every, I wait once a year, I get to go, you know, and do and be in the choir and do, the, do all the things I love to do. And um, one night during a spirit circle, sitting in around a circle, uh, s'mores and the kids are doing their thing. She's like, I knew it was gonna be great. So I like, I didn't know it was gonna be this great. <laughs> so I warned Emily, one night we'll be sitting around the fire, the kids will be doing their thing. And I know you're gonna look at me, you're gonna be a little glassy eyed and you'll be like, it's great. It really is great. <laughs> it is great. It is great. <laughs> Would you like to say a couple sure, things yeah. about your experience? Yeah. yeah. Thanks Kate for the intro. So, you know, can you guys hear me okay? Thanks. Um, so most of you know, we didn't grow up in UU. Um, so it was a choice about five years ago. And as Kate mentioned, over the years of being here, I've gotten more and more, more involved. And that was a goal of mine. And that kind of really culminated at Ferry Beach because that was, you know, outside of our congregation, it was this bigger UU world. Um, so everything that Kate said is 100% accurate. It was, um, the other thing you may not know about me actually is that I grew up in camps and um, worked in camps. So this was the perfect thing because it's camp and it's structured like camp, but it's got this spiritual component. So it's just an amazing combination of, of these two ways of, of, of being for me, um, which was really great. So Kate has been talking about multi-gen to me since we met and began so we working together. <laughs> Apparently we were this high. We were this high. All that long. So, I, and I, you, you, uh, right, yeah. exactly. So you understand, I understood what that meant. I mean, obviously like, all right, multi-gen, like we, I get that, but it, what she, and we didn't prepare, we didn't really talk about what we were going to say. So she actually did touch on one of my points that I think is important, which is that I realized being there that it's a philosophical thing. It's the philosophy that everybody embraces. It's, not, it, it, it's just an assumption that exists in our congregation, in our community, that everything we do is for everybody, 
right? They're just, everybody who's here is included and it's made accessible to them um, regardless of any differentiating factor, right? So what was nice about that, as Kate mentioned was, you know, we were new. So it was interesting to be new somewhere again. I've been here for five years and I guess when you're here for a while and there's still things that I haven't done or don't really know too much about in our community, but when you're brand new somewhere, you're looking around like, you know, cause most of the people there had been there for years, right? I mean, Kate's been there 17. That's, that was more typical than me coming in as new. So I was looking around, figuring out, you know, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? So one of the things that was super helpful was that there was an app and then there was the schedule every day and I could figure out every day what we were supposed to be doing and where we were supposed to be going. And from the get-go, it was, you want to join? Join. So regardless of age, so as Kate said, Johan and I like to sleep. So we slept in, we weren't polar bears, but Mamie and PJ were down there every morning, jumping in the ocean. Then they went to choir and Johanna were at, by, by that point, we were kind of getting to breakfast. But what was cool about the choir was that the, if you wanted to do it, you could just go and do it. And there wasn't any prep, right? You go a half an hour early, you practice a little bit and somebody holds up the lyrics. So it was so easy for my seven-year-old to, to do that. You know, it, she just wanted to sing and she could sing. And that, and that was really, really awesome. PJ so, too. and PJ too. So there were a lot of things like that. I would say the two main things that brought everybody together, multi-generation, generationally in an easy way were song and play. So those two things to me being there were critical. There was singing throughout the day. It started with the choir and actually they may have sang at Polar, I mean, I don't know if they chanted at Polar Bear, but typically a Polar Bear has some sort of a chant to get, to get you know, jacked up to run into the water. That's really cold. So yeah, so you usually do a little chant. So I don't know if, 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 if they did that, but choir, then they're singing on the porch. So there's just songbooks and, and people are, are playing um, guitar and people are singing on the porch right before dinner. Then we do the spirit circle, which can also include song, um, but was also play. So there was silly games. Like we did, um, you know, like an Indian chief kind of game. And we did a, a, a silly thing where it's a, you know, you had to form a banana and then peel a banana like and you and you chant and dance super easy you don't have to know it i knew it from camp but you don't have you didn't have to know it you could jump in and you you learn it in a second um and then at nighttime there were events too where there was more song so the singing was throughout and the play was throughout and that made it super easy for people to integrate and feel like they were immediately a part of something they could, they could sing the songs. We sang them multiple times so they could know them by the end of the week. I mean, there were Fairy Beach specific songs too, which were fun, you know, that everybody knew with hand gestures and all that. So by the end of the week, I got that. Mamie knew it really quickly, but we've been singing it at, at night in our house. So at bedtime, we you sing- Fairy Beach song? Um, and we sing most, well, the Fairy Beach song is a little more upbeat. So we'll sing that in the car. But the one that Kate's gonna play for you, which was just absolutely beautiful. Um, we sang at night, and then there was another. It was a, a, a it was a poem. I, I mean, maybe it wasn't written as a poem, but it, it, it's a it's poetry to music, which was just so beautiful that we sing. So we've carried. We already signed up for next year. So um, we did. So that's an endorsement in and of itself. Um, but I just, um, I guess, really, what I want to say about it is that it was so easy to, to enter in. And, as, and if we're thinking about just how to build and bringing people here, you know, what makes people feel able to enter something? You know, what makes people comfortable being something? How can they get into it without, maybe they're nervous to ask a question or something or they don't. And it was helpful, obviously, that Kate was there. I was a little more prepared, but even if she hadn't been, right. um, I would have kind of known what to do and there would have been ways for me to, to, to get started and get to know people because when there's activities and there's things to do, it's, it's easier, right? It's easier to do that. Um, so I think those are kind of, you know, that's, that was our experience. Um, 
you know, being there, I, I want to thank the church for their part in sending us there because that was um, really important. And um, I think it gave me a, a broader perspective. And I thought a lot about, you know, how we can bring some of that here. And I think we can in an, in an easy way and integrate some of those things that, again, being new, when you lose that over time, you forget what it's like to be new, right? Um, and have to have to figure out and navigate a system where we've got incredible depth, right? We have a lot of things that happen. Even I don't, like I said, know everything that goes on or have participated in everything. There's tons of stuff here in terms of community and ways to be involved and ways to meet people, which is also, I think, attractive to people outside of here who aren't necessarily members who may not be able to come on Sunday mornings because of life stuff, you know? So the more things that we have in that way, the more things that people can do um, and be a part of and be a part of the community, I think um, is gonna really be, be great for us. Does anybody I, I just have any, okay, thing. yeah. I just wanna say that one thing that was really interesting is that um, you know, the choir thing is so, is so important for, for all kinds of gatherings, right? The singing together is, is really, is really important. And so I was shocked when PJ, you know, followed me to the choir and like- He actually has a decent voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he's not he's, terrible. <laughs> no, but he's not a singer, but even he's if not. it was terrible, it's not, it, and, and so PJ said to me, sang, we sang together the entire week. Um, we've talked a little bit after we got home about how certain songs, we got to find a way to bring them to the people at church. So he was so excited. May May singing her little, uh, you know, butt off, just letting it go. And, and in fact, once the, maybe starting day two, there was like, there was like the girl group up there. There were like a whole bunch of like seven and eight year old girls, like owning the space, you know, just, yeah, it was they hilarious. It. They were very serious about it. They were it very too. serious, very, very serious. <laughs> they were, no, they were it was so not funny. a joke. I mean, but I just want to say that like PJ said to me, like we would sing certain things PJ would cry because it was just that moving. Some of the things that we sang, one of which you're going to hear in a few minutes. And he looked at me at one at one point and said, "God, I wish I wish we could do this at church. I wish we could do this at church." I, he said, "I wish I could do this at church," but he feels like, how would he sing in the choir? Like he doesn't. I mean, there's he doesn't know how to get in, and and this is what he wants to sing. He doesn't want to sing the kinds of songs that the choir sings. So I just I just want to point that out because, you know, singing together with other people can be such a moving spiritual experience for so many people. And we don't really have that here in a way, you know, just that casual, you don't have to, you don't have to be a singer to, to do it. You can participate. There's, there's a, you know, again, making it easy for people to find things that, that really fill them up, right? And, and I was shocked to realize that PJ longs to sing in a choir like that. Sing songs that could make people cry is really what he wants. <laughs> they were, they were. Better out than him, right? Yeah. That's what we say. All those feelings better out than him. Anyway, so I just leave you with that. It's something to really think about um, is how we can make it easier for people to find their way, their ways into certain things. Um, I just found out last, I don't know, like happenstance that there's a book group that happens. I mean, there's no evidence of it anywhere, but it happens. It's been going on forever. I mean, right? Meredith told me about it. I'm like, well, you know, there's a lot of things here that people have found that really fill them up that nobody but the people in the group and maybe a select other few know about. So we need to publicize and make make it more obvious to newcomers and people who have been here for a long time. I, I asked Tracy Wagner, who's been here how long? You know, who doesn't know Tracy Wagner? Have you ever heard about the book group? Never heard about the book group. Never heard about the book group. So, I mean, anyway, so there's that. So the other thing about multi-generational community is that um, the really beautiful thing is you don't have to uh, you don't have to be alone in in the world, right? You build you build connections with young kids. They keep you feeling fresh. You learn new things. The young kids learn from the older folks all a million things, right? I mean, you know, church is the is the is the curriculum 
for, for kids and youth. And uh, so just leave you with that. So this is a song that we learned um, at Ferry Beach that really is all about the fact that none of us have to carry everything all by ourselves, right? And that's part of why we come to church, isn't it? So we don't have to carry the weight of the world all by ourselves, so. Um, Before that, Kate, Jean, did you have a question? Yes. If anybody has questions, I'd love to yeah. field some. Is, is Ferry Beach Star Island? No, no, Star Island is another camp. Ferry Beach is right on, right, right. It's in the same vicinity. It's in Saco, Maine. So Ferry, uh, so Star Island is an island off the coast of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Just a snitch up the road is Ferry Beach, but it's. So are there accommodations that they allow? Oh yeah, better. We have air conditioning. <laughs> we we booked the air conditioned accommodations, although we didn't need it this year. No, it was very anyway. cool. It was very very cool. So um, the the musician of the week. Um, anybody else? Ferry Beach. Oh yes, Hold sorry. On. Anybody else with questions? Gene. This is one of those common area questions. First of all, I brought my. I came to the church. Gene, why don't you go to the mic? Oh, oh right here. you know what? Maybe the mic can come to you. How about that? So I came to this church for my children. I wanted my I I wanted my children to know and trust adults. I, they needed more adults in their lives than I could provide. So I came here for that. And one of the things that was really important to me was that when the kids came up from uh, church school, that they weren't like pushed away from refreshments. They were included. <laughs> in I know they touch everything. And, I'm sorry. And, they don't. And, you know, nope, that's they don't. what it's supposed to be about. And I, I also hope that I, I assume that because you are staff and you are on the board, that some of the insights that you have from this amazing experience, you are going to intentionally introduce as as possible here. And and I totally applaud that. I think that's wonderful. So thank you. Thanks, Jane. Anybody else have any questions or comments or insights? I want to just say one other thing about Monk Jen. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I actually didn't realize until this year, the amount of work that goes into the fair prep. Um, I had a, a, an insider view this year, um, but even something like that, you know, I brought the kids for a little while because we, you know, they were home, but, you know, Johanna helped Mary in that white elephant tent. They just kind of hung out yeah. um, and she helped and Mamie and I did boxes in here, but even something like that, that's, that's multi-gen. It doesn't have to, it's, so it's not this orchestrated thing that we do all the time where this is going to be an everybody event. That's an example of the, the kids should be there helping, frankly, right. um, if they can. Exactly. And so now that I know that's what's going to happen, um, I, I didn't quite, I didn't quite understand, but now I do, but I think that's a good example of, and it was meaningful for, jo for Johanna. And it's meaningful for me to work and lug boxes. Like that's what I want. You know, she should understand that that this is what we do for our community and for our church. Um, so again, the understanding of what goes on. And if you you have been here a while, I think it's easy to forget what it's like to be new. So we always have to remind ourselves: Does the do the new people know this? Right. What does what what does it mean? They might hear an announcement, but can they tangibly understand? What it what it looks like, and I've I've been here five years, and I didn't know until this year, you know. So it's it's things like that. I think we can be more mindful of, and that'll help, um, you know, bring folks into the fold. Okay, and now a song which I'm sure we will sing um, in church because. It's awesome. I think uh, PJ it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a goosebump song. It's a goosebump song. It's called Loosen, Loosen Baby by a woman named Allie Halpert, who is an amazing singer. This is a live sort of slightly longer version, but I wanted to play the whole thing for you. It's about four minutes because it's like going to church. So I just invite you to close your eyes and listen and enjoy it. Oh. This is the rock band. That's Technology. The this is not the song, folks. This is not the song. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. A kiss, a kiss cover band is going to come in for in gathering. It's happening. Don't tell anybody. Listen, listen, Ellie Helper. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, nothing worked at my house either this morning. So. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Just please uh, join in the spirit of prayer. We give thanks this morning that our community has the richness and diversity to bring the message that Emily and Kate brought to us today from their experience as both longtime uh, and new 
uh, participants in an uh, institution like Ferry Beach. We give thanks and express hope that this institution, this church in its community can find ways to be intentional, to help connect people through song and play and spiritual sharing. And we express the hope that someday soon we'll be able to sing again without fear. May it be so. Amen. So again, thanks so much to Kate and Emily for this uh, uh, a wonderful riffing. I think they were describing what they <laughs> intended to do this morning and they did it both at the beginning and with their wonderful song at the end. Um, we will um, uh, have uh, coffee and refreshments shortly, um, but first we have uh, an announcement by Nancy Langford. Uh, thank you, and I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but my husband Bob and I were here last night for the play, which we encourage people to see. We've got a week left, and um, Mary and Rudy Langner were here, and they asked if we wanted to see the plaques having been moved, and um, it is finished, and it is interesting depending on how you envisioned it, so I would encourage people to go into the sanctuary and look. Thank you, Nancy. Um, so uh, now's the time to um, put in a plug for the, the play. Again, this afternoon, uh, there's going to be a two o'clock matinee here. It will be the coolest place in town. Um, and you can all get in for only $10 a piece. Um, if you're so inclined and you know if you've seen it before, um, you could still come again because you'll laugh just the same. Uh, any uh, hands here? Anybody who's seen it, the play? Oh, very many people have. And can you all give it an endorsement? Just shout yes. No, no, don't raise your thumbs. They, <laughs> the, the people on Zoom can't see. So just let's hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. Two o'clock this afternoon and then um, Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights um, next week. Um, but the most important thing is uh, Bob Hughes will be speaking next week. Bob, uh, you got any topic you're ready to just tell us about? Yes, I do. Um, going to be speaking next week, and my subject is going to be fond memories of working at Fenway Park. All right. <laughs> Bob Hughes uh, will be speaking to the people on Zoom who might not have heard this about fond memories of working at Fenway Park. We can find out what it's like to throw those hot dogs. So. <laughs> uh, and then um, we've got an open spot on August 21st. Um, so I'm just glancing around the room. Um, don't all sign up at once, but we need, we need somebody on August 21st and also September 4th. Uh, and we have a few more dates uh, for uh, hosting as well. So um, uh, I think uh, that's all we've got. Again, Emily and Kate, thank you so much for sharing. And do you have any final things you'd like to say? But don't do it over there. Come here. Oh, it, it, well, it's, it's, it, do you all want to do a, a quick um, spirit circle thing that we did at Ferry Beach? Sure. Okay, so we're going to have- for everybody. Okay, so we need to be in a circle. We're going to do, Kate, we're going to do go bananas. Okay. Just a few. All right, so everybody come in a circle. Well, I can't, I have to do it too. Well, let's see. Yeah, we can. Okay, I don't, I hope it. Let's see if I can see them. No, you just have to speak okay. loudly. Okay. All right. So. She's the shy one. All right. So um, we're just going to do a bit more than I'm going to do. But um, we'll 
will start with these. All right, so you're going to mimic me and then you'll get that. You're going to form banana, form, form, banana, form, banana, form, form, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana. Go, bananas, go, go, bananas, go, bananas, go, go, bananas, form. Potato, form, form, potato, form, the potato, form, form, potato, peel, the potato, peel, peel, the potato, peel, the potato, peel, peel, potato, then you mash, potatoes, mash, mash, potatoes, mash, potatoes, mash, mash, potatoes, form, the mullet, form, form, the mullet, form, form, the mullet, then you comb. The mullet, comb, comb, the mullet. You comb, the mullet, comb, comb, the mullet. Then you rock, the mullet, rock, rock, the mullet. Then you rock, the mullet, rock, rock, the mullet. Good job. Imagine 21 young adults and like 20 teenagers, like rocking their mullet. This was a huge circle. A huge I mean, it was, it was with everybody. This is what we would do. Right after dinner, but before the evening activity. So we come together and That's everybody cute. would just kind of play and do something silly. I actually did at age five. My mother gave me something the, over in a book. The question that uh, Meredith asked was Did anyone ever ha here have a mullet? And um, uh, uh, only Megan and Kate admitted to it, I think. <laughs> And so the first time ever in a fisherman's service, we went bananas. 